Hello, and welcome to mini lecture number 28 on the fundamental theorem of calculus. Note that we've already gotten to lecture 28, and we're finally touching on what we think of as fundamental to calculus. So this is a really important and fun lecture. All right. So the fundamental theorem of calculus I've stated down here is that the integral is the opposite of the derivative, so the integral is known as the antiderivative. All right, so what do we mean by that? What we mean by that is that if we take the derivative d by dx of the integral of a function f of x dx, that this derivative is going to cancel with that integral. So the derivative is going to undo that integral. So what we're going to get out is f of x. Similarly, if we integrate the derivative of a function, this integral and this derivative are going to cancel each other out and they're going to undo each other so that what we get out is the function f of x. All right, so the next little bit is a graphical representation of the fundamental theorem of calculus, thinking about the integral as the area under the function. All right, if it doesn't make any sense to you, that's okay. You can always remember the integral as just being the antiderivative, but if you want to see graphically why that is, um, pay attention to the next little bit. All right, so what do we mean here? So the integral of a function is this area under the curve. All right, so if we think about how that area is changing, the area is this part here. If we think about how that area changes, as I take a little delta x, that is the derivative d by dx of the area, which is equal to d by dx of the integral of f of x, and in this case, that is that light gray area there. So as we change delta x, we go from having the integral, which is the dark gray area, to having the integral, which is the dark plus the light. And in this case, that change in the area is intermediate. If we work this out, we know that the derivative and the integral cancel, so this is just the height of the function f of x. Note that the height of the function here is also intermediate. In other words, if we worked out the integral, which is the area under the curve here at x equals 1 half, and we make 1 and a half, sorry, and we make the area just a little bit bigger by changing delta x, then we have the rate of change of the area is this light gray area down here, which is moderate, or sorry, uh, large. So there's a big change in the area here, and note that there's a big change in the function. The function is large. Finally, if we're way over here, the change in the area is this little white gray area, which is a small change in the area, so d by dx of area is small, and similarly, the height of the function is small. So this is why that the rate of change of the integral is equal to the function. All right, in other words, the integral is the opposite of the derivative, so the integral is the antiderivative. Okay, so how does this play out and how does this help us take integrals? Well, it helps us take integrals because it helps us define our integration rules. So in the last lecture, we talked about the fact that the integral of a power is equal to x to the n plus 1 divided by n plus 1. This was the inverse power rule. And that is because if we take the derivative of this, we'll get back to the argument of the function. So if I take the derivative of this quantity over here, I should get the argument of my integral. So if I take the derivative d by dx of the integral of x cubed, I want to show that this is equal to x cubed. All right, so let's do this. You know how to take derivatives. So let's take the derivative of this first term. We have 1 fourth. We can factor that out. Now we use our power rule. We reduce the power by 1. 
and multiply by the original power, the one-fourth here, and that four cancel. The derivative of a constant is simply zero, so we have plus zero, and this does indeed come out to be x cubed. Similarly, if we take the derivative of both sides of this function, they should be the same. So d by dx, the integral of e to the 3x dx should equal d by dx of e to the 3x over 3 plus c. All right, now we know on the left-hand side that the derivative and the integral cancel out, so we have e to the 3x. Does this equal the derivative of this right-hand side over here? Well, in order to do that, we can factor out a one-third. Then we have e to the 3x. Now we have to do the chain rule. We multiply it by 3. Now we take the derivative of a constant, and that is simply 0. The 1 third and the 3 cancel, so we get e to the 3x is equal to e to the 3x. All right, so the last one is that we're going to check that this integral is indeed that. All right, so let's take the derivative of both sides. We have d by dx of the integral of 1 over the natural log of 2 times x dx is equal to d by dx of 1 over the natural log of 2 times the natural log of x plus c. Okay, so if I take the derivative of this side, the derivative and the integral cancel, so I simply get 1 over the natural log of 2x. Now, is that equal to the left-hand side? Okay, so let's take the derivative of this left-hand side. We take the derivative of the first term. We're going to take out the 1 over the natural log of 2. We're going to take the derivative of the natural log of x, which you guys know from derivative rules is 1 over x. We take the derivative of c. That's just simply a constant, so it's plus 0. This left-hand side is equal to the right-hand side. So if we take the derivative of an integral, that gives us back the function. All right, so with that, I'm going to let you practice the integration, um, the fundamental theorem of calculus, by thinking about the area under this curve here.